Well, as many of you know, and some have probably guessed, I've got a passion to entertain people. I just love doing it. And whether I'm at a party or at a restaurant, and very often at all the trade fairs I go to, even travelling in a train, I love to have something I can have to show people. I keep a lot of it in this little package here, which I've developed over 50 years. There's about 50 items there as well. Very small items, which are every bit as fun as a very big one, but it's so carryable and so easy to carry. Some of them don't work very well on camera, but I've taken out so I've quite a number here which do work reasonably well. We've practiced and we've found that some of these are okay for camera work. So I'll show these and you'll get the idea of what it means for me to entertain people with them. This is a very early one, for instance, which I picked up in 1991. It was made for me by Scott Kim, who's a much admired artist in California, Chinese American, who loves writing things so that when you turn it around, it looks the same, the same word. So he asked me what name my name was. I said Timothy Rowett. And in the middle of the initial, yes, a Q. Oh, Timothy Q wrote. That's interesting. He blinked five times, and ten seconds later, he was writing this down. And this is a bit scrappy because this is now about 30 years old. This is exactly writing. So it says Timothy Q wrote from here, and it says Timothy Q wrote from here. And slightly more difficult to read, it says March 1991, and this is Scott Kim. Astonishing that he can do that in just ten seconds flat. Because when he's got more time and he's got, so he's given, he's given um, projects or remits to do it, this is what he can do when he's getting at his top form. This is a remarkable card from Douglas Cameron from Glasgow, who I've known for many years. He thought of the idea himself, but he couldn't produce it, so he asked Scott Kim to help him. So what's going on here? Well, it's got the word Douglas Cameron here, and when you ask what's his job or what's his profession, well, you turn over like that, and there suddenly the word M-A-G-I-C-I-A-N appears, which is magician, and that's exactly what Doug is, a very fine magician too. What a brilliant idea. So the middle of his name, the end of the first word, and the start of his surname, when it's reversed and turned over, turned into M-A-G-I-C-I-A-N, Douglas Cameron. So that's an astonishing bit of work that um, Scott Hume was able to develop having been given the remit and probably had several days working it out how to do it properly. And the second one to show when you've got a lot of time to do it is this remarkable logo really I suppose it is that a friend of mine, uh, Sivi Fahi, has got him to make for him. He's a, a Parsi I think but he's, a, he's a, a, a Amer American, I think he's a maths teacher and travels a lot, goes to New Zealand and places. Here's his, um, here's his, his surname, F and there's an A there, a funny little sh smaller letter R, an H and an I. And the interesting thing is the first name is also there, but you don't turn it upside down, you don't look at it from back to front, you just look at it in a different way. This is what's called ground reversal. So the first name is Sivy, S-I-V-Y, and here it is as big, very, very fat white letter S curling around like that with a bit of background, black background there, as if it's been written on black paper. The S there, the I, there's the main body of the letter I, and the dot on the top. Here's the nice curly V, and the last part of his name is the letter Y, all in white on black, rather than the normal black on a white background. Astonishing to work that out. So when he's got time to do something remarkable, I think this, this extraordinary man, Scott Kim, can do quite, quite magical things, which I've never come across in anyone else before. So there are other business cards here which are fun to show because they're so original. This is a friend of mine, Mark Cesar Ducati, who gives you his card like that, and you're expected to find out that it actually opens up like that, and you'll then find that there's a mirror at the top and some funny words at the bottom. And when you put it down like that, we'll get a nice vertical place and see if we can get Mark Cesar Ducati appearing in the mirror the right way around because it's backwards writing on the bottom and it's real the corrected way when you look in the mirror and just to show it's it is a mirror I'll wiggle it a bit and move it a bit. A very very fine business card and Mark gives it out at every of the, one of these events which I often attend. Here's another remarkable one by another friend of mine who's very much into toys. 
It, there's his name there, and when you turn it over, there's nothing. It suddenly disappears. It's tiny microdots. So let's look at it again. Adam Rubin, and he has said, whatthehells.com, that's his, one of his websites he invented at the time. It's all done with tiny, tiny little dots like this. It's, it's, it's an extraordinary art form like that, because it turns completely blank when you turn to the other side. But his company makes the most extraordinary, wonderful things in sells them out of California. Um, and I met him many, many times at Gathering for Gardener. Here's a marvellous card that a friend of mine, David Birder, who's in, in London, has made. He's made many cards over the years, but this one here is one of his nicest. It's lenticular, and when you make it, when I turn it in dental little circles like that, you see what he's got there is a kaleidoscope, and it makes a, a reaction just like he does collect kaleidoscopes as I do as well, but he loves making pictures of it appear on a business card to show his love of optical devices. That's what he does. And it's a very, very nice card to give to people. So, what about him? Here's another remarkable one, a, a man who's um, made something of something which is his passion, which is wood. He's a, an elderly man in his 80s or 90s now, Lo uh, Andreas Lochai, and I meet him every year at Nuremberg, and this thing says the old woodworm. Well, that's what he's calling himself, slightly self-deprecating. It's made of just wood, extraordinary. It's one of these funny woods which retains its shape and so on when it's taken down a very fine slither, but it's a lovely card to give me, so that goes into my... Uh, my, my little packet of fun things to put in my pocket to show someone who's making something quite remarkable there like that. Then there's a much more difficult card which I'll have a go at. This is a Japanese artisan who's made something where you have a black chicken there and then you have a, a white chicken there and then you've got to lay them one on top of the other so that they exactly match if I can get that to work and one covers over the other so completely that you don't see the um, uh, the chickens anymore. You just see a, 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 you just see an a, a egg, a black egg. It's just if I can get this right, it comes right in like that, and it's just about there. If I can get rid of the last bits of stuff, but you've got the idea. You've got to get the overlap exactly right, and then goodness me, suddenly you see a, a black egg. So this is rather like reverse hatching. It's two chickens suddenly disappearing and appearing as a black egg. An extraordinary thing for a business card, but that's, that's, that's life, that's people doing interesting things. This is a nice, much easier one to make, which you just photocopy. It's just very contrasting. There's two people here. This is a chap who a landlord of a pub, which is actually a very, very nice, comfortable, interesting hostelry, which I've been to a few times in Devon. He talks about lousy food, lousy landlord, and don't ring this number. Of course, he's playing, he's got his tongue in the cheek, they call it, and he means very opposite of it, because it's actually a very, very nice hostelry, but he's been over self-deprecating. And this is the contrast, which I put the two together. Another friend of mine from New York, who's He's just a, a perfectly normal, humble person, but he loves putting the idea of what all the all the things he, he can be uh, he can blow himself up into the most important person in the world. That's something like that. It's a bit of fun. The contrast between them is nice. One is far, is, is 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 being far 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 too. Uh, Far too clever about yourself, and the other one is being, well, anyway, you take the opposite. Now, here's some interesting things which I've had in the collection for a long time. This is one of the earliest things I picked up, about 19, 1970s, I think it was. It's an old Victorian thing. It says that if you do a phantom baseball, if you do a little circle like this, so things start to happen, and when you speed up very gradually, it suddenly appears as a little grey ball in the middle of the thing. I went, I think it was discovered way back this, probably before 1900 even, but it appears in many books on optical illusions, and it's easier to produce as a car, because you can't really make the book go wiggle, 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 but I'll make it go a bit too fast in a minute. Uh, it's probably as it does it, and I'll slow it down a bit. But the effect is that those extraordinary, very clear patterns, when I speed it up, the brain interprets it in a different way altogether, and it appears as a grey ball, which is very remarkable indeed. And I think that's the first one I ever had. When I took it out of the pocket, I wave it like that to people, and people go, wow. The effect is very strong. Good one. Then there's a couple of fun little um, joke notices, which I like. If you're running a shop, for instance, a retail shop, or any business for that matter, and you're saying, we're always getting people coming in with a complaint. So, well, I say, you want one of these then? And they come in and say, I want to complain about, you say, hang on a sec, here's a complaint form. Would you mind filling it in and look what it is? 
something that Martin Gardner sent to me sometime in the early 1990s, a mini complaint form, and you're supposed to fill in your complaint in the box below legibly, and of course it's impossible. It's a lovely way of diffusing the whole thing and making people have a laugh. So I've had lots of those, and I end up giving them. Many of these things, actually, I give away as free samples because that's so easy to make. I've got a big sheet of that. And here's a similar idea. You attach this to something like a book. Just put it in with a very, very light... That light, light, light bit, bit, bit of adhesive, so it's not spoiling or anything, and it's apologising for itself. It says, "I'm sorry, I'm here." <laughs> Roughly speaking, it's a sort of some sort of self-deprecating, but in a very a humorous way. I like things which are that sort of genre. This is a very clever little puzzle that a friend of mine who's running a puzzle shop in London for many years, and it's only just folded, and he's passed away by now. But some Village Games made this in 1988. It was a little mathematical puzzle where you add it up and found that it didn't work. That does not produce the answer. So you're challenged to how do you make it so it's a correct addition? One, two, three, four, five. You've got to make it uh, into 1988, which was the year that he produced this. And the answer was a very tricky one. This You've simply got to fold it like that with a, what's called a crimp fold. Fold it in like that. So that comes up to there and then makes a 707 and cuts out two of the numbers. When you add that dot up, have to go yourself, you'll find it comes up to 1988, but it won't work like that. That's wrong and that's right. That's a very tricky, tricky little thing to do. Well, people like doing trick trick things to you. Here's a marvellous one which comes from that wonderful book I've got, which I want to show soon. It's, um, it's an optical illusion, really, but a very, very well drawn one. Those two tables apparently are the same size and the same shape, but in the plane of the paper. When you're looking at it at three dimensions, they look very different. That's long and thin, and that's short and wide. And the proof of this is something that a friend of mine invented about 30 years ago. He said, what you've got to do is you've got to put on a, a tablecloth, and then you can show it. So I made a tablecloth for him like this, like a gingham tape, with, with um, white and blue squares. And I found, I, I, I actually made a photocopy of it to make it sure it exactly fitted. And it now seems to be impossible for that one to go there, but actually it does fit exactly. And it's a magic tablecloth because it goes on both tables, which should be very different in size. Again, that's something that's so easy to make and photocopy. I make lots of copies of that and keep it in my little packet in my, in my pocket and give them out as a little gift for people, which I love doing. One of the most recent ones I've come across, which is, um, I found it literally a few days ago. This is a, a cartoon that appeared in the Bloom Report that a, la a, a, a lady friend, Mary from Chicago, produces every week on a summary of the toy business throughout the United, the United States. It's a very good, very well worth reading vlog she does on instant, uh, news items of the, uh, the whole of the toy industry. And this is a cartoon she started putting in cartoons into her vlog. And it was Pi Day just recently in America, which meant it was the third month, that's March, and it was the 14th day of March. So they'd write that as 314. And then some years ago, some mathematicians said, let's call it Pi Day, because 3.14 is the value of Pi. Well, hang on a sec. If you just write it in mirror writing, and put it as P-I-E like that. Well, that is actually a mirror. I could do it with a mirror, but what I'll do is I'll just turn it round. You'll see you've got the number here and you've got the name there. If I turn it round and light it up, and now you've got, you've got the name at the top and you've got the number at the bottom. So it's a perfect, perfect mirror image of the other one. And what a clever idea to make it into that. And that's the letter pie, and that's a piece of pie, which is a pork, pork pie or something you can eat. So it's a brilliant cartoon. I'll put that into my packet in my in my pocket because I think that's probably the most recent one of my of my collection. Oh my! So many ideas thrusting out of people's minds and things. There's two to finish up with here. This is um, a moody one, but it's fun. It's quite fun. Because what you're supposed to do is get the boy on the potty. It starts like that, and you really have to cut out that square, fold it up, and then that's oh, tear it off. You're not allowed to fold a bit of paper. You're supposed to get the man sitting properly on the pot. How do you do it? Well, I'm afraid it's a bit rude, but I put it on my hand like that, would you believe, to solve it. And I'm going to turn it around like that and hold it up to the camera. And there's my two fingers, as if it's my bottom cheeks. Goodness me, what a clever but rude thing. Makes kids laugh. But well, what are those things? And the last item to show, I think, which is this one here, which is my business card, which I've had from only about the last uh, eight years or so, written, made up by a friend of mine, Anamorphic Writing. And this is 
When I hold it up like that, unreadable, you can't read anything there, there's just lots and lots of squiggles, and of course when you turn it over like this and slowly put it onto vertical, then you can read my name, Timothy Rowett, Tim the Toy Man, that's me. So that's something, when I finish showing the rest of the um, stuff to friends at these events like cinemas and um, restaurants and parties, they say, where well, if we get some of this stuff? I say, well, just contact me. I've got spares of many of it, and here's my business card. And they take that away, and they've had a lot of fun, too. And I have a lot of fun, so I'm going to go on collecting into my dotage, I think, things like this, which are lots and lots of fun in a very small volume and highly pocketable. <laughs>